Okay, good evening, everybody. I'm going to try to make a comment in the form of this video to see if I can get across some points rather than write them uh, and become vulnerable. Writing is vulnerable to people who obstinately want to find the enemy in what you write. They want to find how you sound like a, a lefty or a progressive and immediately knock it down. And so it's very hard to get through this battle, this polarity battle going on in not just the United States, but in the West. The West is obsessed with a duality, binary, polarity fight. And everybody wants to know what they're talking about and sound intelligent. And we fall prey um, to wanting to have adverse, seeking the adversary, uh, wanting to win the fight and getting stuck in this, um, you know, this polarity entrenchment and, um, you know, depriving us from really understanding what uh, the human condition is being affected in our civilization and society by. We're no, uh, we're no longer understanding what has happened to us as a species by the forces of civilization. We just take these idealisms and these, these uh, formulas of values and principles and we arm ourselves with them and then we go look for who to oppose and it's really sad and tragic. And, and the reason I'm making this is because I see something very clearly and I, I'm, I'm, I'm really frustrated. I don't know how to get it across. As soon as I um, say it, I'm uh, getting a typical response and which is also important because you have to understand what people are afraid of or what they consider their enemy or you know what they're predisposed to analyze what the other one or the opposition is about analyze like regarding what the opposition is about and what i'm seeing is that um i don't know when this happened but i mean i saw it happen i don't have a timeline but apparently now if you say you know, there were people that first responded to Black, Black Lives Matter with All Lives Matter because they understood something, intuitively perhaps, and they didn't realize how important it was to make their point well, clear, and loud so that people didn't take that and shoved it out of the way so that they could continue to press forward with what they believed was the solution or the necessary prescription to um, to head the fight with. Um, the idea of Black Lives Matter comes from the obvious, initially the obvious racism that is installed in our society and our culture uh, through the police and how we can tell uh, without evidence, with, with just plain to see how by also by the evidence of disproportionate imprisonment of blacks and Latinos, you know, uh, all human beings break laws, but somehow our our jails are full of blacks, and and so the, you know you you saw you see how police are more willing to talk socially, talk through with people that look like them or that appear to be more what is the. Um, the, the main the mainstay of American the um, our American population you know whether they're ignorant or sophisticated doesn't matter but it's they define them as and, and we call this typically white uh, then they seem to be more willing to talk through it or as soon as the person is of African descent appearance uh, they attack you're hostile and then also there's a situation that we never talk we've never talked about which is uh, the African Americans have grown uh, a sense of pride and dignity, which is, um, of course, very in, in, insulted by oppress, oppression, any oppression, whether it's legal and justified police uh, uh, oppression, any kind of repression insults the human quality of dignity and self-love and honor and freedom. and our African Americans have, in order to combat the social conditions of always, you know, that they've suffered years already, this part of our culture has a characteristic 
um, you see a pride, a kind of a, a they call it joy and happiness, and and um, it's a strength, right? And we all kind of know this, but we don't know what to make of it, right? And this is how I analyze it. This is how I understand it. What, why our African American population is characterized by this strength? Uh, our, it's a natural human reaction to so much mistreatment and belittlement and offense. You have to regain yourself. It's like a natural reaction, and so we have defined. Uh, African American personality because this way because of how badly they were treated, good for them. It's it's a it's a blessing in disguise in a sense. But this characteristic of pride and dignity, that is cultural, uh, also becomes f more desperately incest when authority sort of lack uh, sort of a disrespectfully wields oppressive attitude against it because you smell the injustice and so you get these reactions of, you know, typically you see a quote-unquote European-looking person, American-looking, not, not African-American, you know, they get arrested, they, they see that the cop is going around in circles and getting ready to, you know, drop the bombshell that they're being taken to jail and they just kind of give in, you know, they'll pay well, you know. They don't try to run. Um, I believe it is good that that because it's uh, that these cases are, are often are triggered because um, because of the offense and the 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 insult uh, racially racistly charged uh, exercising um, uh, whimsical police authority against this pride uh, triggering uh, these cases where then it escalates to what we have taken and to uh, to define to define uh, these uh, matters that have happened that have given rise to Black Lives Matter um, and, and all the uh, the events that then become more definable, more understandable, more obviously um, abusive, not so, you know, not so uh, human scientifically analyzed, but the, where we start reacting to what is more than now intuitively an obvious uh, picking on what is clearly more abusive towards African Americans than anyone else. And so the, the slogan or the, the motto, Black Lives Matter, is valid. But what is the problem with it? This is what happened. Some people started seeing, and, and maybe nobody knows how to explain this in, in America, that we, and maybe not everybody actually saw this, but they kind of knew that this is a problem that comes from the police. Therefore, they need to change their attitude and abuse towards all American citizens. And African Americans will be included. Uh, but when we made it about African Americans, we did what we always have done through the last 200 years, you know, 150 years. Nobody has stopped to think that, why is it that we can't get rid of racism? I mean, this should be the, this should be the, the protagonist question, the most outstanding question that needs to be answered. Uh, we should not accept that we can't, that we're, we should not accept that we're stuck or we should see and identify that we're stuck. Um, what could be dumber for a society than to have your feet stuck in the mud and not see that your feet are stuck in the mud? And you see that your feet are stuck in the mud. When you go back in the 30s, there was this, you know, uh, and then some, I can't, I can't, uh, uh, you know, timeline, all history, I'm not that detailed in my knowledge, but, um, you know, throughout history, every th 30 years, let's say, there, had, there was an upheaval, and then some changes were made, and we thought we're getting closer to, solving it and then again it happened and then in the 50s it happened again and then the LA riots and then these riots and then we're learning today about things that 
we're forgotten in the past um, and we're rehashing and we're constantly rehashing and just like we did dozens of times before throughout the country this is just the latest episode and the common denominator is that we made it about race and so when you have human beings that use their brain and their mind to analyze a social problem in, in their civilization and the elements or the language, the vocabulary that they use sets us up to continue thinking in terms of that, the problem never goes away. We are a society that can't help categorizing people. Now, this can be also explained, but I don't want to make this a three hour long video and it's you know, maybe in with the, the human mind can go, um, and I don't want to start coming down on the British again and their way of wanting to order everything, but the human mind can, can have, has two general forces. One part, one that is the, the, the survival instinct of the individual, the individualist mind uh, and the, the leader mind and the, the survivalist um, sharp intelligence. And the other one is the collective, more organic uh, tendency. And so civilization, which, which for example, is into understanding how things develop in society and what really, how does the human mind work and human sciences and psychology to do with society and these two tended these two currents or two hemispheres of, of the human mind are not separable we simply have the volume turned up higher on not uh, we can't separate them but we throughout different swaths of a civilization one will be more intensified than the other we're wiser when we're thinking of the single human being in our, in our social complexities and human sciences, we're more intelligent about ourselves. But then there's the mind that wants to structure and order and organize and, 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 and think logically mechanical. And this is a, a, the other force that tends to want to divide um, and want, wants to put everything in its place and order things so it can be used more properly. And, this is the, uh, the other kind. So what happens is in human civilization, we, any, not just in the British English uh, civilization, um, but uh, throughout the whole world, uh, civilizations that have advanced very quickly have given particular importance to ordering and, des and, and designing, engineering things and inventing systems. Um, and this will be conducive to a society that becomes more uh, willful upon the lives of individuals. Uh, it starts treating us more like machines. And, and this characterizes, so like I said, you can't separate these two because there's always, it's always fused together with the, the, the organic social thinking, understanding upon humanity and civilization. But uh, in, in, a given, in any given moment throughout human civilization, you'll find expressions of both, except sometimes we tend to start putting all our eggs on one side and less, and then somebody, maybe you have an intellectual movement of philosophers and blah, 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 and a whole, you give a, a spur of advancement in, in the other, in the human sciences that sees one human being, one, one citizen, one country's people, we have really uh, laid in strong in, in categorizing and, and dividing and, and these people and the gays and the blacks and the latinos and blah, 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 and the, the, you're, you're a criminal you're a rich person you're a, you're a poor person you're from you're a foreigner you're a mexican you're we're t obsessed we've come up we've forgotten how to have conversations about us americans if like if you take somebody from latin america or, or africa or some other country i don't know Europe, you will you will hear people say us Italians, you know, and have a whole lot of ideas and understanding about all the people that populate your country. Our culture, our society has gotten intensely um, grouped. And so ask an American what Americans are like. 
you can't answer it. The first thing they think is, well, we are what? We are blacks, we're Americans, we're Cuban, Mexicans, we're if we're Asians, or if you're rich, or you're in government, or are you somebody living on you're homeless, you know. We start thinking of all these categories, and so we become really dumb, I'm sorry to say, in in un, in understanding the human condition. And the problem with uh, with us is that you you can't be dumb actually. You you have to always answer what you need to understand and have an explanation for things and continue to think and something will will re uh, compensate for being a little lost in our own population as far as having ideas and notions about what our people are about. It's very difficult for us to say what our people are about. We have a lot of idealisms. It's how we're all about freedom <laughs> and democracy or something like that, which means nothing and it's to totally not true anyways. Um, and so we will continue to use our mind actively to live and understand the, the every day the, the living world of our of our country except that we will uh, start using constructs which substitute what would in other countries be a wise perception of all and all our people we start having constructs of, of confrontations and there's a lot of confrontations of left and right and socialists against you know, capitalists and black and white and so how do you come out of that uh, trap? How do, you, how do you extract yourself? It's very difficult if you don't really have a lot of strength in saying, well, I can't, I can't just make myself stop thinking about our existence, about the world, in terms of these elements that I now have, only have to describe my country, you know, who's black, who's white, who's this and who's that and who's gay and who's not gay and you know, who's a politician and who's living on the street. You know, I have these elements now that I use like pieces to understand my, 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 my own existence and my country and, and all of us and I can't just stop it. I can't just look at somebody and not think is he black or white or is he poor or rich or is he Latino or is he white and privileged you know or uh, but I know that I have to stop somehow so I have to make a concerted effort to just think in terms of a human being in the in the sense of how we are all identically the same because we've forgotten about that <laughs> all human beings can laugh about similar things can Good food and dislike bad food. All human beings are identical, black, white, Asian, whatever, <laughs> gay, not gay, or whatever. Where we have a, a, an enormous area, the, the majority of anything that you want to talk about, which concerns existence, is common, identically common to all of us, and we could actually exist in that perception and talk about issues as they would affect another person not a person of this or that ethnic race, whatever, but we can continue talking about, well, any human being in that situation would have done that, or any human being, so this is fair for any human being, and any human being, and we have to concertedly make that effort to think of each other as people. If we don't see that, we will fill it with something else. And right now it's been filled with this notion that um, to say all lives matter is what, what did somebody say, what lefties are saying to try to, I don't know, some conspiracy thing or to, you know, um, to, to give, make light of, uh, diffuse the issue, I don't know. They have a whole explanation now for why it belongs to, uh, the progressive airheads, you know, which I hear a lot of times. <laughs> but anyways, let's not get into that. Um, and so why is it important? Let's go back to those first people that said, wait a second, wait a second, all lives matter. Let's get back to that for a second. To say all lives matter 
is to say African American lives matter because first, in critical in, in critical order, we're all human beings and we're all matter. That we all matter. And if among those human beings there is a group of people who are getting excessively and abusively mistreated, we can still deal with that without needing to categorize them into uh, people of African descent or African appearing skin. Because then we create those elements in that vocabulary and then we look at another person with really dark skin and we wonder if that person is getting mistreated by the police because we have already made reconstructed the pieces. And in, in how do you say this, um, subconsciously, subliminally, what we do is we're also teaching ourselves subconsciously or subliminally to assume that because you're this skin or that skin, you may be prone to this, this, or that. So we install the, 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 start, the starting points and the tendencies. We install the initiative to become a racist society by thinking in terms of our appearance, of what we look like, what color our skin is. We have to consciously make the effort of thinking of selves, of ourselves as our most strongest defining element. If you travel, you'll see that the way we talk, you know, we are definitely one people. We have an accent that is just happen anywhere else in the English speaking world. And, you know, we should really then talk about what we're all like. And within us, you know, there there are egregious injustices because of shallow people that can only think in terms of skin color. You know, we have to kind of reconfigure the whole thing. If we want to get rid of this problem that never has never left us, and the reason it never leaves us is because we don't stop ourselves from thinking in terms of those categories that will later look to support that idea. If you first set a country made up of races and your first thought is always subconsciously and intuitively that we're all human beings and we, we, we don't see differences really uh, naturally and intuitively initially. We don't look at, like little babies, like children, you know, they see another baby and then they notice that their skin is different. But that is secondary and it actually in, makes them more interested and curious and uh, more prone to want to get to know that baby better because the strongest first leading force is the fact that they're both human beings. And so when the different skin color appears, they want to work through that so that they can stay in that plane of equal human beings and relegate the skin color to its rightful place, secondary. Babies know how to do that <laughs> because they, they're acting purely and perfectly. We later construct a society that has assumed that we're made up of different races. And so what happens? We made ourselves, we train ourselves, trained ourselves to ignore the subconscious prime directive of equalizing our humanity like babies do. And we start needing to explain what those differences are about. And so then we go back <laughs> and we say, then, the, you know, it's like a, um, once we have a few steps forward, then we have something to support the differences that we identified. And we say it is because of social, uh, uh, economic um, disadvantage and economic privilege and neighborhoods in which they concentrate that everybody's poor and the, and the wealth goes here. And then so we, we construct the whole thing to go back to explain why we're not equal. But we decided to not be equal beforehand and we forget about that. We forget that we decided it's going to be that way. We're going to be different. So this is why it's so difficult. We have to consciously sort of toughen and and, and um, you know, push it down and say, always one human being, always one human being. If I'm about to say, oh, because he's Asian, wait, why did you say that? Why, why did you, because I'm 
used to it. I'm trained to look for an explanation that starts with him being Asian or her being Asian. Okay, now that you know that, throw it out and start again. She is smart for a girl, I guess. That's a smart girl. And you didn't say Asian. Isn't that amazing? We have to, we have to really push hard here and become one people again. I hope I got across the, my point uh, this time. All right, I hope so. I, I think it's clear anyway.